There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen. <laughs> regular life, this is where I hang out, Dalhousie University. I'm a teaching professor there. I also do research, so if anybody's wondering, do you get your summers off? Well, no, but I don't mind that one bit. So teaching comes in different forms. I mean, we can do it in the classroom, but in the summertime especially, I get to interact with my research group. So say hi, everybody. Great. Now, over the past year, you know, because of the pandemic, our university was closed, so I found a different way to interact with our students, uh, and many of you as well. So through my YouTube channel here, I managed to post a bunch of videos uh, that, well, took quite a bit of time to put together. Let's just say that I didn't get very much sleep over the past year. So today I'm talking to you about teaching, and no, I'm not claiming to be anything near that, but I do want you to think about this. What do you think qualifies as your best teacher? Now, of course, there are countless different examples that we can think of of a great teacher. But in the end, we're really thinking about somebody that inspires, right? Sometimes a student becomes the teacher, and it's their job to sort of push their students on, to sort of give them all the tricks to do their best. But how exactly do you do that, especially when you're thinking about teaching from the classroom perspective? I mean, are you supposed to give some kind of great motivational speech? But as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. For one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies. We're going to survive. Let me take our lives. Today, we celebrate our independence day. Goosebumps every time, but no, seriously. It's more than just a speech, isn't it? And after all, you still gotta put the work in. Uh, not just the teacher, but the student as well. But from what I'm talking about here, it means you've gotta do your best to find ways to make your students do their best. Now, there, there should be no surprise here. I'm just standing behind a green screen. Like, I'm literally hanging out in my basement, um, just talking to, to a camera. But what about back when the schools were actually open? So, I don't know about you, but this to me just feels like a room. Um, an empty room at that, it's even got an echo in it. But it, it wouldn't even matter if there was an audience in front of me, the fact that we're physically located one, uh, together in the same room doesn't necessarily mean that we have a chance to make that connection. When I'm talking to you, Am I making a connection from way over there? I mean, the last year with the pandemic, at least our university, we were closed. So we were unable to actually come here to the classroom and experience the normal university lecture. I do know that if I, for example, had a question and, and there's a hundred other people sitting in this room, I'm not going to really feel comfortable to interrupt the professor uh, and, and just say, you know, I, I, I don't understand. So maybe my best strategy then is to just not raise my hand, to just sort of sit back and relax, uh, do my best to follow along, take some notes, and, and hopefully figure it out a little bit later on. So I guess the question is, is there a way to make like, you know, a closer connection? Can we take this barrier and remove it uh, from the contact that we have with our students? So the point I'm really trying to make here is that you don't need a classroom to speak to your students to inspire your students as best as you can, and of course, to deliver the knowledge that you're trying to transfer. If you've been on YouTube looking for educational material, you've probably stumbled across this channel here. So Khan Academy has been around for almost a decade. They have like millions of subscribers and thousands of videos and all kinds of different topics. So here's what the videos do look like. I mean, it's, it's just kind of talking with a pen. So simple diagrams, lo lots of nice colors in here. The information is presented in a clear and concise way. And of course, you can watch the videos as many times as you need to uh, and pretty much find any topic you want to find as well. Now, humans are naturally curious. So if you're going to spend time on YouTube sort of just trying to keep yourself entertained, why not do so by trying to learn something in the process? So how is it that people try to make that interaction? Well, 
it comes in many different places. And you can see that you can use a lot of like colorful animations. You can sort of do these real nice production quality videos. Of course, to do something like this is going to take a lot of time and maybe a lot of resources to do as well. Oh! This is me reclaiming my title for the world's largest and tallest elephant toothpaste experiment. And this is Some of our, our biggest YouTubers today are educational channels. So Mark Rober, um, he's, he's done everything. But these videos, they take a ton of time to produce. So maybe I'm getting a little off track. I mean, if my goal is to try to suggest that you can make these videos as well, I mean, do you need that kind of production quality? Um, well, maybe I'll ask my brother here to, to explain Coach it to you. Reagan, today's video is about being yourself. So many people are scared to be who they really want to be. They're intimidated by what are other people going to say? Is that all right? Does that sound good? So yeah, quite simply, you don't have to do anything fancy. I like Eddie Wu's uh, channel as a good example. I mean, literally there's a, a video camera in front of the classroom. He's chatting on a chalkboard. Or, Marker, marker board, I should say, and he's just talking to the class. They're responding with him real time. It's really interesting to watch. I encourage you to, to check out this channel. All right, so here I am behind the green screen, and uh, like I actually had two different classes uh, for the channel that I was, that I was uh, putting together here, the short chemistry channel. One was on intro analytical, uh, about 120 students, so a second year class, and the other was on a mass spectrometry topic, a smaller class, about 30 students. So how did it go? Well, quite differently. And, and in fact, as I jumped into it from the beginning, I, I wasn't sure how it was gonna be received. So you make a video, you put a lot of time into it. My idea was that the videos would be kind of short, somewhat entertaining. I tried to keep things live and funny and interesting and put a lot of you know clips to movies and things like that. But ultimately, it's down to the students to to watch them. And you got to remember the time, right? This is 2020. This is right in the middle of the pandemic. The students were not exactly ready for the change. We're used to university, the lecture, the classroom. And for good or bad, that's the sort of recipe to how people learn. Then it became, here's a video. Watch it whenever you want to. They're short, so you know, it's not going to take any time at all. But you still do have to put the time in, right? You still have to watch the videos and do the work because just watching the videos is not defining the class itself. So the end result was, was like it couldn't have been more different. In fact, this class, uh, they watched all of them. And they watched them like basically I posted a video on Sunday night and by Monday morning, pretty much everybody in the class had seen that video. Like they were, they were eating them up. Whereas in this class, it was like nobody. Uh, well, no, that's not true. Some, some watched the video. It, it was a, a small fraction of the class as a whole. But, you know, night and day differences. In the end, I decided to, to, to do this. I kept going. Uh, and in this phase, I consider it a total failed experiment. Um, to the point that if you go back and, and look at the videos that I presented, they kind of stop midway through the term. Like the last video that I posted was, I'm not even sure, October or something like that. I didn't get through the entire course um, because I, I reached a point where it was like, what am I doing? Like I was making four or five videos a week. And as I said before, I, I was losing sleep over it. I was stressed out of the amount of work that it took to put these videos together, the amount of work to put this video together. It's like clipping and editing and filming and all this kind of stuff. Um, it just wasn't worth it. But from my perspective, it was like, it was worth it as long as the rewards were there, as long as the students perceived that it was worth their time. In this class, yeah, since everybody was watching the videos, and, and, and the reception that I was getting was that they enjoyed these videos, they were learning from these videos, I said, I'm gonna keep it up. But I will tell you something here. So yeah, the videos are not the class. The videos are a start to the class. This was the, the idea of, of working on the flipped classroom. The idea that basically we're going to learn together. Um, you will be present in this sort of classroom, this basement, 
Um, I, I have like, well, right over there. Like that's, that's the TV that I'll project the class so I can see them. So I'm like looking right over there and I can see my class, whoever attends the class for a live lecture uh, on the assumption that they watch the videos. But now it's like, it's time to learn. So in both of these classes, the videos were a starting point, but the class was actually taught here on this blackboard. So in intro analytical, it was like, oh, we want to do an internal standard problem. So, you know, we've got our, our sample and we put an analyte in it and another material. And then we have a concentration of one and the other and you start doing calculations, right? We would go through the problems together. Students could interrupt. They could ask questions as much as possible. I kind of stopped to say, is that good? Do you have a question? Should I repeat it? And we worked its way from there. The only thing that was different in 2201 in the intro analytical class is that basically the, the intro videos before that, they disappeared. The students still had other resources. They still had lecture notes. They still had other recordings. Uh, Dr. Peter Wenzel actually put together several videos that weren't posted on his channel, um, but helped the class to go through problem upon problem. And all of them were there by choice. You could watch the video if you wanted to watch the video. And things changed. At that point, I saw much larger attendance. So instead of seeing one or two students coming to the help sessions, I would see 20 or 30 of them coming up every single day or you know, two, three times a week um, to get that extra help. Not because the videos were gone and it's like, now this is the only choice that I have, but because I was starting to share my story with the class. I was starting to say, look, I'm only making these videos because I thought they would help you. Not because I, I feel you need to watch them or anything. I'm just trying to give you the best tools that you can have. And right now I'm thinking that you and me talking like this, making a connection like this, that is the best way to get the class together. So ultimately this video for me is about encouraging you to go out and, and make your own videos as well. And they don't need to follow a specific recipe. So here's, here's just a couple of tips that, that I think might be helpful. Keep them short. There's sort of a time where it's hard to sit down and watch a one hour video uh, corresponding to our usual one hour lecture. Find convenient breaks and keep your videos short. How short? Well, I don't know, one to 15 minutes. There's a reason why this channel is called Short Chemistry. Actually, there's two reasons I'm five foot four. <laughs> Visuals help. So yes, you can sit and sort of talk on a couch the whole time, but we like to see what's going on. And this is why I'm writing down what I'm saying. It's just, it doesn't need to be a fancy computer animation that we like to talk on, on whiteboards, on chalkboards. So use what you feel comfortable with. And, and that is the final tip that I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say, be you when it comes to making these videos. Find the style that suits you, if it is on a board, if it is on a computer, and do that. In terms of the entertainment value of the video, that doesn't matter. If you are being you and presenting the material authentically to your style, that's what the students are going to appreciate. So those are really the tips for, for today's lesson. This is what I wanted you to take away. Um, and I hope you do have some fun with this, that you give these things a chance. Um, my future on this video, I will let you know, I'm gonna be recording a lot more videos. I'm teaching a course uh, this coming year on separation, which is another topic that's sort of integral to my area of research. So you're gonna hear a lot of chromatography, electrophoresis, and stuff like that. Yeah, you'll see a lot more of me uh, in, in the coming months. Um, I think that's it, so yeah. Enjoy. Uh, thanks, thanks for your time. Uh, take care.